Thanks for joining us for the Friends of the Farm lecture series. My name is Candace Haas, and I want to thank all of our viewers and our customers joining us from the pharmacy, from the pottery, and from the Natural Healing Centers, as well as all of our friends watching us from all over the world joining us to learn about cannabis. Today, we have a really great webinar for you. As many consumers know, topicals can help relieve pain, inflammation, stress, cramps, headaches, skin conditions, and so many more reasons. It's a very, very popular um, use here at the dispensary, and a lot of people are interested in making their own products at home. But as we know, sometimes these products can be outside our budgets, or we may just want to enjoy making our own products at home formulated for our own specific needs. So in this session, we're going to be joining author and educator Sherry Sicard, creator of the Canadomy's Easy DIY Cannabis, Cannabis Topicals course, for an overview of making these products at home. Sherry's going to discuss how and why topical products work, plus a little um, quick and easy DIA ways for us to try making topicals at our own home. I've known Sherry for many years um, as a, a fellow drug reform advocate, um, and I've always found her to be an incredible resource of information and really, really helpful for new consumers. Sherry is the author of eight published books, three of which are on cannabis, and is the course creator at the Canadomy, and an on, which is an online cannabis venue focused on helping home consumers get the most out of their cannabis. Her easy DIY cannabis topical course was born after one of her elderly, elderly cl cooking class students who complained that they couldn't afford the expensive topical products, the cannabis salves, which they have been using for arthritis on a very fixed income. Sherry knew that there was a better way and so because of that, she put together this course. And at that time, you know, there was little to nothing that was written already, you know, about making your own cannabis topicals. So Sherry spent over two years researching this topic and developing easy topical recipes for home consumers um, to create at home. And if, at a fraction of the price would be to buy them themselves. Since her online course, she's taught over, she's taught thousands of students how to make their own cannabis infused topicals and suppositories. Um, Sherry is the author of several cannabis books, which we sell at our um, Orange County Normal table, The Easy Cannabis Cookbook, Mary Jane, The Complete Marijuana Handbook for Women, and The Cannabis Gourmet Cookbook, all three great publications. You can also find out more about her courses and about the publications at CannabisSherry.com, and that's with a C, C-H-E-R-I, and Canatomy.com. I'm so pleased to have Sherry with us today. Hello, Sherry. Hi, how are you? Thanks Great. everybody for being here. Yeah, we're so excited. Like I said, you know, a lot of people come in for topicals here at the dispensary and they're really great. They provide a lot of relief, but sometimes they're they're quite expensive. And, you know, some, and a lot of people like to make stuff at home. So I'm really excited to um, have you join us and to give us a little bit of more information. Okay, yeah, we don't have a lot of time. So this is going to be a quick uh, we're going to cover a lot of material in a short amount of time. Uh, but if you are interested in more, like I said, the, the course is about three hours and comes with lots of recipes and things like that. So let's dive in. Um, I just want to get a feel for the crowd, though. Please uh, drop it in the comments uh, if you use topicals and also whether or not you've ever made them before, because that'll let me know kind of the level uh, that we are dealing with, because I know um, a lot of people seem skeptical, and I used to be one of those people that was skeptical um, that this could even work, and then I got caught with leg cramps in a hotel room one night without my prescriptions, and I had this CVD salve, and I'm like, well, this isn't going to work, but I'm desperate, and it did, and that really opened my eyes to how much topicals can help. I mean, for me, it helped with, with cramps, but there's a lot of different uses. So topicals are amazing. But before we get into this, I just want to let these two questions, get these two questions out of the way, because I always get asked this. Um, and you that's drop uh, it in the poll too. So people can okay, slide yeah, in the let me section know. and they can vote there too. That'd be great. Um, thank you for that. So yeah, um, two of the most common questions, do topicals make you high and will topicals make you fail a drug test? And the answer to that is no in most cases. So I'm going to give you the one exception where it might cause a problem. And that's not what we're talking about tonight, but there are transdermal patches that are kind of like a nicotine patch. So those 
can cross the blood barrier. So they may cause a problem with failing a drug test or psychoactive symptoms. But otherwise, no. Topicals don't uh, get into your system. They don't cross the blood barrier. So you're not going to get high from a, rubbing cannabis on your skin any more than you're going to get drunk from rug, rubbing alcohol on your skin. You're rubbing alcohol. I like an analogy. <laughs> right. It's a good, that's from Dr. Amanda Ryman and it's brilliant, but it, it really puts it into perspective. Of, so you can relax about that and it's not going to make you fail a drug test either. So let's get those out of the way. All right. <laughs> so how does cannibal, cannabis topicals work? It seems like magic. I've had people say that. It's like, it just seems like uh, I had a question in my YouTube channel and like, is this just a placebo effect or people making this up, you know, but there is science behind it because the skin is the largest organ in the body and it is um, covered with cannabinoid receptors. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that the cannabis in your topicals binds to the cannabis receptors in your skin and that prom provides localized relief. So here we are again, it's localized relief, not systemic relief. You know, so it's only going to, I want people to have a realistic uh, expectation of, of what topicals can do. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is going to, <coughs> excuse me, localize, provide localized relief. So where you're feeling pain or inflammation, <clears throat> it can be a headache, it can be menstrual cramps, it can mm -hmm. be arthritis, it can just be muscle aches, but it's a localized relief. It's not getting into your whole system. So that's one type of one thing to keep in mind. That said, I have some people that have very serious neuropathic pain that have reported great results with topicals. So it does help, uh, you know, it doesn't really, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter how severe your pain is or what it is, everyone responds differently, but it merits trying it out to see if it is effective for you. Because I've heard some real miracle stories from people that have taken the course or that that do write to me because of my books and websites and things. So that's essentially how they work in the system. What can they help with? I want to put in the disclaimer right up front that we have very little actual um, scientific evidence. There are some studies, a few, and um, maybe I can find some and follow up with them later. But most of what we have as far as evidence is anecdotal. And we can't discount that with cannabis because for eons and eons, that's all we have because really the government was standing in the way of any real research. So a lot of what we do know about it is anecdotal. The problem with that is we can't quantify it in a scientific terms the way people uh, would like. And even with cannabis, uh, everybody responds differently, you know, even with edibles, with topicals, with inhalables. Each individual has a different metabolism that metabolizes cannabinoids differently. And so everybody's needs are different. So you really have to try it for yourself in order to get the best results. And I think that's one of the beauties of making your own topicals mm -hmm. is that you can get what you need. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Especially what we do know like fragrances um, that you like, you can include like fragrances and other herbs. Yeah, and, and I am going to talk about that well. too. Yeah, and other healing ingredients as well. And you can have cannabis in the dosages you need too. But I'm going to get to that in a minute. But um, just wanted to talk a little bit about what we do know. Cannabis is an anti-inflammatory, and we know it can help with pain. Um, we also know it can help with things like cuts and scrapes and and burns because it's also antibacterial, you know, it has those properties. It's even been known to fight MRSA, you know, which is a, um, a very serious um, viral infection, bacterial infection. But mm -hmm. yeah, so it has those those uh, properties. But there's other conditions too that are more anecdotal, like skin conditions. There's some people that'll say it will help with eczema. It'll help with psoriasis. I'm, I have psoriasis on my nails. I got to say so far it hasn't helped me. That doesn't mean it might not help you or a different type of psoriasis. So it merits trying it because there's really very little side effects. So I will cover one point where somebody might be allergic, but otherwise there's no real side effects to topical cannabis. Uh, cramps, people have had great results, like just rubbing it on their abdomen or, or their legs or wherever the cramps are. Same with headaches, especially tension headaches, you know, muscle relaxation. Uh, sex can, it can be a great sex lube. Um, 
and it can really help with that. And people have been reporting a lot of great results in that regard, not only uh, physically, but psychologically too. So we'll see. And there's a lot more claims of things supposedly that topicals can do. And um, I want to put in also that when I talk about topicals, I also include suppositories in that because cannabis suppositories really work mechanically in the same way that a topical does. They really don't cross the blood barrier. They're providing localized relief. But if you're having, you know, pain and cramps or issues in the pelvic region, that's kind of another way to get that topical into that region. So mm -hmm. something to keep in mind. Um, as far as whether they cross the barrier, that's been a topic of a lot of controversy. Uh, I researched it all I could and by everything I can find that it seems like, you know, it doesn't <laughs> is the best information we have, but you will see a lot of people on the internet claiming otherwise. But as far as the science is concerned, no, they don't cross yeah. the blood barrier either. So let's talk about cannabis topicals in their most basic form are really nothing more than an infused oil. So if you've ever made edibles, you know how to make a basic topical right there. In fact, I even say to people, if you're, you're cooking with cannabis and you have a little bit of leftover olive oil, don't wash it away, rub it into your skin. I mean, it's valuable. So yeah. really an infused oil is in its most simplest form. If you have a infused like olive oil or coconut oil, or whatever, you can just rub that on, see if it works for you. See if, if you're responding to topical cannabis. And that's just a very, very easy way. Um, and a lot of edible oils can also be used topically. And if you go to a natural food store, you'll see endless examples of uh, oils that we normally eat being used in topical products. Well, infuse those oils with cannabis and now you've are got an instant topical as well as something that can be used for food. So it's very versatile. Uh, if you want to go beyond the basics, though, there are just a myriad of carrier oils that can be used for topicals specifically that will address various conditions. And I go into these a lot in my course. I mean, we could spend several hours just on the topic of carrier oils because they all they have slightly different properties. So depending on your needs and how you're using it will make you choose one oil over another. I mean, some of them clog pores, so you shouldn't use that if you have acne, but others are better for aging skin and drying skin. And so they all have different properties. So people always ask me when they're starting, well, what should I use? Um, unless you have an allergy to it, I would use coconut oil is a really good place to start, I think, with the uh, topicals. Um, and I say that for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's solid at room temperature, but melts into a liquid on your skin. It has the longest shelf life of any carrier oil because oils do go rancid. Mm -hmm. But uh, coconut oil can last as much as two years. So that's significantly longer than most others. Uh, it smells decent. Uh, if you're using it as a sexual lube, it tastes de decent. Um, so it's a really good all around thing. And it also has great properties. It's antibacterial, it's antifungal, it has medicinal properties. So if you're just going to want to try your hand at an easy topical, infuse some coconut oil and you can use that as is or add fragrances, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but there are lots and lots of other carrier oils. Like I said, if you're going, depending on what you're making, like I love olive squalene is amazing for face creams and wrinkle creams or things like that. Uh, you're going to use um, more solid at room temperature fats like a cocoa butter if you're going to, say, be making a natural cannabis infused sunscreen because that's going to stay solid more than turn to a liquid, you know. So really what you're making will depend on what your best carrier oil is. I'm going to go into this a lot in the course, but for the purpose of this webinar, if you're just a beginner that wants to try making some topicals, I would say infuse some coconut oil or maybe some olive oil, either will work. Mm -hmm. Try and use that, rub it into wherever you're feeling pain or inflammation and see if you feel any relief. Um, dosing is another topic we could spend hours on, although at the end of this, there's going to be a coupon code that will give you my dosage calculators for free, and you can use those for edibles or topicals. And there's also a free dosing class that comes with that that'll show you how to figure out the dosing. And 
Uh, if you, if anybody here has my dosing calculators and use them for edibles, it's the same mechanism. And it's just instead of how many servings, you're going to estimate how many applications of that topical you will get. But I do want to say something about dosing because I had a great email right after we la launched the course, which was several years ago now. One of the first people who took it wrote to me and he said, I liked your information about dosing because I always tell people to play around with dosing just because what works for one person is not necessarily going to work for you. You may need a lot more. You might need less. You never know everyone's individual. But what he said is he used to buy this very strong thousand milligram um, topical and, and it worked great, but it was really expensive. And now he made one and he made it at half the dose and he was amazed it worked just as well as the higher dose to one. So um, you need to play around and experiment for yourself to find your ideal dosage range when making topicals and certainly when making edibles as well. Um, cannabis is cannabis. Unlike edibles, though, if you get too high a dose of topicals, you know, you're not going to be uncomfortable or too high. Mm -hmm. But cannabis is probably the most expensive ingredient in your topicals. So, you know, why use more if you respond equally as well to less? So it, it really does merit um, playing with the dosage till you find what works for you. That's cool. Yeah, you always want to use the least amount of cannabis that you need to get the desired effect. So they're really exactly. finding that balance. You know, you're saving yourself money, making it last longer, getting a better result. Like we talked before this about biphasic effects and how, you know, cannabinoids in small amounts versus large amounts can actually do different things. So like you said, you know, trial and error, you know, keep a cannabis journal, um, find what's right for you individually. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, at, at its most basic, those are your topicals, but making topicals can be lots of fun. So what else can you add to your topicals? And again, we go into this a lot in the course, but if you've ever made any kind of topicals, uh, you can come up with your own formulas too, because, you're just substituting the infused oil for the oil that you would have used to make, you know, whatever it is you were making. So uh, what else can you add? I like to add other ingredients to when I'm infusing the oil for a topical, uh, depending on what I'm making. So like Arnica or Calendula, I mean, Arnica is really good for arthritis pain. That's an herb. So these things you can source at botanical stores or, online uh, calendula adds great color it adds fragrance and it has a lot of medicinal purposes as well um, any kind of herbs you like that you can add also essential oils and again we could do uh, uh, several hours on this topic alone too on essential oils and uh, we go into the course into how to add them and what are safe ratios to add them in because you don't want to get too much essential oil can be um, irritating to the skin and can be dangerous. So you do want to be careful with that, but essential oils can add lots of great fragrances and they can also add medicinal properties. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's other specialty ingredients that you'll add depending on what you're making. Like beeswax is a great example. Uh, I use it in my body butter in order to keep it stiffer. Um, we don't want it to melt too quickly, you know, so uh, that it, that's an ingredient that is moisturizing and it also is antibacterial and antifungal a lot of these natural ingredients are but it also adds um some sturdiness to a topicals mm -hmm. formula so if you don't want something too runny too liquid you would use something like that uh depending on what you're making epsom salts i'm going to give you instructions afterwards to make some homemade um bath salts with cannabis and you can make bath bombs too. So you would use the normal ingredients, but you would infuse the oil that you're putting into it. Uh, a little bit of vitamin E oil uh, added is a good idea in a lot of topicals. Um, people say it is uh, a preservative. It really isn't a preservative in the traditional sense of the word, but it will help your topicals have a little bit uh, of a longer shelf life. And I'm going to talk about shelf life of uh, homemade topicals in a minute. Um, so let's see. And we'll talk about that now in safety. So what do I mean by topical safety? And it isn't the usual, oh, I'm going to make somebody too high with cannabis. No. <laughs> what we want to keep, it, we want your topicals to be safe in that they are contaminant free. 
Uh, they don't grow mold. They're not, the oil in them is not going rancid, things like that. So I do advise that you make small batches. So an amount that you're going to use, say in the next one to three months max. So, and then just make some more. Um, keeping it in the fridge will help them last a little bit longer. So, um, and different oils will have different shelf life. So I can't tell you across the board, it will all last this long, but uh, the smaller the batches you work in, in the better. So you're not keeping product around for a long, long time. Yeah. You want to make sure that your tools and your jars and everything are clean and sterile, just like if you were canning food yeah. um, and never ever add water or water containing ingredients, unless you're also adding a broad spectrum preservative. Why? Because water invites mold growth. So none of the formulas, the 60 plus formulas in my course have water or water containing ingredients. So what would that be? Unfortunately, things like aloe vera has water in it. So that could, you know, and you'll, these are, um, I always rail against bad information on the internet um, about cannabis and it certainly exists with topicals, but it exists with topicals even without cannabis. I um, mean, you'll find formulas all over the internet that add water and make these homemade lotions. And they're really not safe to leave out um, because it is invoid, inviting mold growth. And uh, so I wanted to keep everything in the course all natural. So I, I avoided using water in any of these. So, because I didn't want to use a broad spectrum preservatives. Okay. That's, a really good take topicals. Huh? That's a really good takeaway, not something that people would really kind of um, know. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Yeah. Anything that has water uh, has the potential to invite mold yep. growth. So um, you can buy a broad spectrum preservative and um, there are special online places you can order that from. You could probably get it on Amazon. But broad spectrum really has to cover a wide range, not just some little thing that you put a few drops in. So, so that is important and something I think a lot of people don't understand. And again, um, if you keep your topicals in the refrigerator, they will have a longer shelf life and that can help them last a lot longer. <laughs> okay. So um, what else do I have here? So what kind of topicals can you make? Basically anything you see in the drugstore, in the specialty store. Um, massage oils, as I said, an infused oil is nothing. You can use that just as is as a massage oil, or you could add a few drops of fragrance. Um, salves, salves really are just made with uh, a solid at room temperature uh, oil or a mixture of them. Sometimes I use several oils in my formula because they have different properties. Mm -hmm. uh, body butters, you're going to get a free tutorial on how to make body butter. It's amazing how easy it is. And uh, my lavender and green tea body butter with cannabis is my favorite. I get serious fan mail on that. So that will be in the free download tutorial. So you that can try good. this out for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it's really great. Um, the bath soaks and bath bombs. Now the, the bombs are a little more intensive, but I show you how to do that in the course, but you're going to get a free tutorial on uh, the bath soaks, which is just bath salts. And that's uh, just a matter of adding a little bit of that oil to your mixture with some of Epsom salts or sea salts and some fragrance. So very easy to make. You can make lip balms. I make wrinkle serum, sexual lube. I have uh, roll-on balls like uh, you can put in your purse that if you're feeling pain, you can just roll on a little bit re of relief wherever. We have like a speed stick type topicals that again, you can just apply wherever it's hurting so there is all kind of uh, over 60 formulas lots of different topicals but again at your most basic if you're just in this course and you don't want to dive in all the way right now you can just infuse some oil try using that topically maybe make some bath soaps or the, or the body butters see if it works for you and yeah if it does it's make it's a lot of fun to make your own topicals too because then you do customize them for what you need uh, the fragrances fragrances you like, the consistencies you like, and also the dosage of cannabis that will best suit your own needs, regardless mm -hmm. of what those are. So I think this also make a, a great gift too. you know, oh, make, yeah. make bombs for, you know, mothers or father's day or birthdays, whatever, you know, right. um, 
that's what I for sure. Of- I mean, I I also have I have a Facebook group too. I should send you that link for people that make topicals and edibles at home, and that's everybody was doing that last Christmas for sure. It's like I got all my shopping done, and, <laughs> and uh, it didn't cost that much. And people now there's now that it's been a few years, there's people every year waiting for those gifts. You know, because <laughs> the flavor you know, bomb this year, right? <laughs> right, right. So yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it can be. They make great gifts, but they're also great for yourself. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can totally customize them. Yeah. And people are very, some people are very particular about the ingredients you know, that go into their body. They want everything to be all natural, or organic. And so, you know, labeling is great. But still, if you want to take that control into your own hands and know exactly what's going into the products that are on your skin. You know, right. And, and yeah, with well, commercial <laughs> topicals, that's a good point. Have a lot of additives and chemicals and preservatives and uh, and if you do buy the organics that don't, yeah, they're very, very costly as well. And and again, even those organic lotions have some sort of a preservative because they can't have water in their products either, um, especially on a commercial product. So if that's important to you, yeah, making your own is the way to go. So, mm-hmm. so I want everybody to infuse some oil and try it and let me know how it works for you. But I'm happy to take questions at this point if you yeah. have questions about topicals. Yeah, so if anybody has questions, please um, put them into the Q&A section. And then I had a couple, too, because these are questions mm-hmm. that I get, you know, working in the dispensary. Sure. So when you're making your own um, cannabis topicals, do you need to use fresh flour or can, like, you use flour maybe that's kind of aged out, a little bit drier, like something that you wouldn't smoke maybe? Is it, like, yep. a good way to use stuff before, like, throwing it out? Sure. I mean, much like cooking, you can uh, use older product. You can use trimmings leaves you can also use concentrates you know and that is that's an upgrade we're going to be doing to the class coming up is if we do need those super strength um topicals a way to do that would be to augment the infused oil say with some pico or a distillate that will add that more dosage so you can really layer on uh, your ingredients to get the dose that you want but yeah it's a great way to use up um, I call it a treasure from trash, things that yeah. <laughs> yeah, are, are, may not be, that are a little bit past their prime, but they still have a lot of cannabinoids uh, mm-hmm. in them too. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, because I just got this question last week on YouTube too, was uh, somebody wanted tips on the most effective way to use topicals. Mm-hmm. And again, that's going to depend on what you're using it for and how, but I did say, I did have two tips in general. Uh, If you can take a hot bath or a shower first, that's good. With any kind of topical, whether it has cannabis or not, your pores are open, you're going to absorb more of that topical. So especially if you're trying to get the medicine to where it's hurting, that's a good tip to take a hot bath or shower first. Apply it when you get out of the bath or the shower. And the other thing you can do is to layer your ingredients. If you're like, if you're really dealing with chronic pain or deep pain, you can have the bath medicated, like use the bath salts. And then when you get out, you put on the lotion and things like that. So you can really layer the ingredients to get more relief and see if that works as well. That's a good point. That's a good tip. Um, I'll have to definitely share that with other people too. Makes complete sense though. You know, your pores are open and, um, what about decarboxylization? If do you need to decarboxylize, <laughs> yeah, 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 do you need to do that before making it into a topical? Uh, good question. You know, I mean, I both decarbed and non decarb weed have medicinal properties. Mm-hmm. So, personally, I like to get it as full spectrum as I can. So, I will leave, leave some raw and I will decarb some. Uh, oh, it's really sure. optional in what what you what you want to work with and what works for you. But yeah, when I tested the formulas, and I got uh, everybody in the little town where I live got to test the formulas when I was putting together this course, and man, they were raving about it. So it seemed to work for a lot of people doing it that way. But like that. It, it's up to you. You can do it raw. You can do it decarbed or or a combo of the two. And um, even the raw stuff, when you're infusing your oil, a little, some of that is going to decarb. So you could yeah. actually even do it all raw, and some will be decarbed, and some, you know, it won't fully decarb in the process of infusing oil, but it will certainly partially decarb for sure. And um, one of our viewers is actually asking us if you could tell us what decarboxylization means, just like real briefly. I know it's probably something sure. you're curious about because it's yeah. you know kind of intensive, but a, a general kind of yeah. And I didn't mean to talk over anybody because yeah, usually uh, 
put in a tutorial for this sure. when I talk about it in my videos, but the raw cannabis plant does not contain any THC or CBD, and people are really surprised to hear that, but uh, they contain the acidic form of these cannabinoids, so it contains THCA or CBDA. Decarboxylation is the uh, process of adding heat, or age also can do it, and it causes a chemical reaction that converts the acidic form to THC or CBD. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, you can look up decarboxylation on my website. There'll be a tutorial that teaches you how to do it, but it's very easy. You're just going to put your crumbled up cannabis or concentrates in an oven proof dish and cover it with foil, put it in an oven at, uh, I like 240 degrees for one hour. That seems to be the best research I've found. Uh, if you ask uh, 10 different chefs or cannabis <laughs> experts how to decarb, they're all going to give you slightly different advice. But um, that the best advice I'd say, say is about 240 for an hour uh, to fully decarb your THC. Uh, maybe a little lower temperature and longer for CBD, but we're nitpicking little percentage points. I mean, it, the general will work for either. I like that. And I like how you said, you know, you have some raw and some decarboxylated because then you get the THCA and the CBDA and then right. you also get the THC and the CBD. So that's very, very smart. Good pro tip for those watching. <laughs> I am always a fan of full spectrum medicine. So whenever possible, I cook with flowers. I make topical with flowers. Um, I use concentrates that are the full spectrum, like a FICO, as opposed to a distillate that isolates out just one cannabinoid. Um, I just think there's too much evidence that the cannabinoids work better together with the entourage effect. Uh, when you start you know, playing with Mother Nature and isolating out certain elements, you get uh, often unwanted consequences. And uh, so I'm a big believer in full plant, full spectrum as much as possible. You know. That's wonderful. That's a good good answer to that. And that's helpful information for everybody. Um, another question we have, somebody's asking, is emu oil worth the expense to use as a carrier, carrier oil? So is it any better than other ones, really, for the money that it costs? It, you know, in my opinion, no. Um, it's not my personal favorite. But it, it's if you like it and you like the way it makes your skin feel, then, you know, if, if it's something you use anyway, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, sure then it's worth it. Um, it's, yeah, it's not my personal favorite. Um, I like plant oils better, but um, but certainly if, if it's something that you're a fan of, there's no reason you couldn't infuse it. And, you know, you're going to keep those properties that you like and add the extra healing power of cannabis. So yeah. it's really a personal preference. And maybe make it in small batches since it's, you know, an oil that because costs it's very expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's the other thing, because anytime you infuse oil, no matter how well you drain and strain it, some of it's going to be absorbed in that plant. So you're going to lose a little bit of it, too. Yeah. So maybe even make a combo with um, infuse another oil and then maybe you can mix emu oil in with it if, you, if you're using a very, very expensive oil like that. But um the other thing with topicals, though, is that you usually you can, depending on what you're making, you can infuse very small amounts, like much less than I normally do for edibles. So I, I may do a half a cup of oil because that's all I'm going to need to make a bunch of these topicals. So um, in that regard, you can use more expensive oil, sure, and it can work. But um, it, it really is a personal preference in what you're making with it and what yeah. you want. You know, uh, the first thing to ask yourself with any topical you're making is what is the goal of this topical? What am I, what do I want it to do? So if it's a beauty treatment and a wrinkle serum and stuff, then maybe you would want to infuse that. So it, it yeah. really just depends on the usage. I like that. Thank you. Um, another question someone's asking, do you use rosehip oil? So if you've had any experience with that and if that works well. Yeah, um, I think some of the recipes in the course use it. So I, I've liked it again. You know, it, we go into this in the course and there's full cheat sheets that kind of give you the pros and the cons of the different carrier oils and essential oils as well. You know, so you can make a decision of this. So oh, well, I have this. I better not use it. You know, especially essential oils. Sometimes there's medical conditions yeah. you shouldn't use certain ones for. So and I don't have them all on the top of my head, but we do go into that. Or you should do some research before adding them to your topicals, especially uh, essential oils. But I, I love rosehip oil. Um as a carrier oil. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Can you add um, um, cannabis? I just to want your... to say one. Yeah, there oh, is yeah. a there is a rose dip. I think essential oil and a rose dip carrier oil. So I want to make uh, a distinction between the two. I've used the carrier oil, and for people who are, aren't familiar with essential oils, they are not what we think of when we say oil, like a cooking oil or an oil we're going to infuse. They are the essence of that plant. They are extremely concentrated, extremely fragrant. You're never going to use them right out of the bottle on your skin. Um, you're going to use drops in your formula. So that essential oil is very different than when I talk about a carrier oil. And rosehip is one of the few things that's available in both. But um, the carrier oil is more an oil that you can infuse that you're going to use as the body of your topical, what you're going to make from it. Very cool. Okay. I'm glad that you made that distinction too, you know, and <laughs> another little. Yeah, because, yeah, you're only going to use drops of essential oil where, you know, yeah, again, carrier oil is more. Could you, know, you add, um, more. could you add cannabis into your existing like lotions and products as well? Like add like a tincture or something? Would that work or yeah. would it like kind of break down? I don't know. You know, that's a good question. I haven't tried it. A little bit of um, experimentation. <laughs> it and what it is, whether it will break down or not, and what kind of tincture. So if you're using a, an alcohol tincture, it may or may not break down another product. But uh, a lot of things that are labeled as tincture are made with a coconut oil or an MCT oil. And those, I think, should probably work just fine because it's oil-based and most topical products are as well. So you might want to try that. So that, that would work, I think. Is there um, a piece of machinery that you like when you use or make your topicals? Like there's like a Levo and like magic butter machine, like yeah. different kinds of hardware. Is there one that you think is the best for making topicals yeah. in your experience? Um, it's the same for topicals or edibles. And mm -hmm. I haven't had a good experience with magical butter or Levo for various reasons. Uh, I like the Ardent FX. And then there's a new one that I, I discovered this year. Um, and I have coupon codes for these and reviews on my website and YouTube channel. The other one is the Pot by Noids. This is a Dutch company. And both of those gadgets, it's the Ardent FX or the Pot by Noids, they perfectly decarb your cannabis, which is great. You can make your infusions in them. So your infused oil, butter, whatever you're infusing. The um, the big difference I think that gives the Pot by Noids a slight edge is you can also make FICO in it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a game changer because you can't put alcohol in those other gadgets. This has a very low um, cycle that you make an alcohol tincture and it slowly evaporates it off, reclaims your alcohol. You need to use food grade alcohol like an Everclear, Everclear or um, another food grade solvent. Uh, please don't use isopropyl alcohol. When I say alcohol, never, never, that's toxic. You want a food grade alcohol. But uh, I was really excited about this particular gadget because it had that capability that the others don't. So if making FICO is yeah. important to you, you would want that one. Otherwise, the Ardent Epic, this is great. Uh, but they both decarb, they both make infusions, and uh, they both work very well, in my opinion, and are good values for what they are. That's nice. I let, I was going through your website last night and I saw that you have links to the places where people can actually buy food grade alcohol, um, which is nice because like in the old days, we'd have to cross state state lines and this and that. And so it's nice to see that they ha we have these like reputable sources that right. we can get these like base materials from instead of having to work with. Yeah, alcohol people. can be tricky, that food grade alcohol. Um, I did some YouTube videos that showed how to make FICO in the Popeyenoids, and then I started getting emails from people who were having trouble sourcing it. And if you live in California, you, you are going to have to mail order it, unfortunately, because uh, Everclear is not sold there. And that varies state by state. So, yeah, there's a coupon code and a, a link to the food grade um, culinary solvent on my website. And uh, they will ship to most states, but it varies state by state. It's almost as silly as cannabis. Uh, there are some states you can't get it at all. They are not allowed to ship to others. You have to get a permit. And sometimes that's just a quick online form. Other times it's you got to be a business. So yeah, culinary alcohol can be a problem. But in California, I do know they can mail order there. Um, if you're in Southern California, I'm going to give you another tip. If you ever go to Mexico and cross the border, and I live in Mexico part-time, uh, you can go to the botanical stores here. The 
botanica mm -hmm. stores and they sell uh, cane alcohol or corn alcohol that is food grade at a fraction of the cost of what you will pay to mail order it or get it in the States. So mm -hmm. it may uh, merit a trip over the border. Uh, some pharmacies mm -hmm. have it. The botanica stores have it. Some grocery stores have it. So you want to check that out in Mexico. But uh, the one thing with the pot, pot binoids, though, if you're making uh, the FICO with the pot binoids, it reclaims the alcohol. So you, you can reuse it over and over again. So that's a really nice feature of that. Yeah, that's another so, added feature. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Sure. Um, last viewer question, then I have just a couple. Okay. Um, could terps also be added to topical? Somebody's asking terpenes. Yeah, for the fragrance and medicinal, sure. Yeah, if you have those, point, no reason not. Oh, wait, let me see. I think we have one more in here. Um, what about hemp oil? Could you oh, use... as a carrier oil? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it has, um, again, I don't have them all on the top of my head, but there's a lot of great properties to hemp oil as a moisturizer. And again, it has a lot of the, you know, antiviral, antibacterial, yada, yada. So it has a lot of great properties. And it's also, um, from an edible standpoint, very nutritious as well. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have coming up next for you? Do you have some more courses coming out, another book, anything like that that we could be on the lookout for? Um, I've been doing a lot of traveling. <laughs> I'm getting older and semi-retiring. <laughs> and uh, I've been doing a lot of writing in the travel and RV sphere. Um, but I still keep up the courses and we're doing some upgrades. We just did uh, an upgrade on my ultimate guide to cannabis gummies course. So we added uh, new recipes on making super strength gummies to that. Uh, I think in next month we're going to have some upgrades coming to my uh, cannabis cooking course. So I'm always working on the courses and kind of tweaking them and adding new information when I have mm -hmm. it or new ways that people can do it. I mean, I really want to get the most out of their cannabis they possibly mm -hmm. can get at home. And uh, I'm here to help them do that in any way I can. And so I'm always here for questions too. If, you, if you're stuck or uh, cannabis, uh, Sherry at Cannabis Sherry goes right to me so you can ask questions and my students always have access to me for questions and problems and troubleshooting like that too. So uh, mm -hmm. there actually is a real life person at the other end, not somebody <laughs> who's going to ignore your questions or they go off into the ether. Um, so what else have we been working on? We've been adding some fun t-shirts and stuff to the website that are cannabis designs. So you can check out the shop at Cannabis Sherry and uh, I'm just always updating the website too. We add new recipes and articles and the YouTube channel gets a new video every week. And so mm -hmm. always busy with all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, so yeah, definitely everybody should check out Cannabis Sherry and Canatomy. Can you spell that for us? And let me. Yeah. It's like Academy, but Canatomy, C-A-N-N-A-D-E-M-Y. Okay, perfect. And I put that last slide up there. So here's the code again. And then um, I know you already said it once before, um, but how can people contact you? At Sherry, C-H-E-R-I at CannabisSherry.com. That's cool. And yeah, like you were saying before, I love how you were so open to answer questions. You welcome feedback. And then you actually even just make those or incorporate those questions to like make, make your courses better and to help mm -hmm. other people understand the material. Because all the time we get questions and it's like, oh, that is a good question. I've never thought about right. that. You know, so it's very helpful in us educating other people. So, um, you know, definitely try some of these things out and let Sherry know what you thought about them. I'd love to hear as well. Um, this has been so helpful and I love all the little nuggets of information that you gave us. Thanks. Um, you know, I feel like even though I've been doing this 20 years, I always am learning. I'm still learning new stuff all the time. You can never. Me too. I mean, you just taught me something new when we were talking before the webinar <laughs> on CBV. I never heard of that one. Before. Yeah. Yeah. So Lots yeah, it's always stuff something happening. new. Um, but yeah, check it out. Check out the website. Check out the courses. And we'll be sending a follow up um, email that will have a downloadable tutorial for making the body butter. Uh, for making massage oils and also for making some bath salts. So you all yep. can give uh, some easy topicals a try to see if it's right for you and uh, <laughs> see how they work. Yeah. So look out for the email. Like I said, has like several links in there. Great stuff for you guys. Um, thank you so much, Sherry, for being with us today and sharing your information and your oh, time with us. Thanks for having me. And thank you everybody for being here with us.
Yeah. And thank you, Mitch, as well. You know, your business partner, appreciate him and all the yes. support that he gave to make this possible. <laughs> um, thank you all the audience. So much. Much. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I hope that we were able to share some information today that helps you become better informed cannabis consumers and that the information that we've shared will help you find relief. Until the next time, be safe, be well, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.